What are the key things that you should be including when it comes to your practice? Well, today we're going to show you the five things that we believe should be in your practice session. So welcome to Me and My Golf. We are here at the Grand here in San Diego and cannot wait to share these things for you that are gonna help you with your practice. Now, if you like our content and you wanna get better, then make sure you hit that subscribe and leave us a comment down below letting us know how we can help your game. We're here to make a difference to your game if we can, so let us know in the comments. Pierce, let's get into this. Every golfer, we're saying everyone should be working at these things. What's the first thing? You know, the first one's the big one for us, really, body pivot. And if you think about the amount of lessons that we've done, live lessons on YouTube, or even when golfers come to see us, Andy, the body pivot is really letting people down. So look, this is what we're after when we're talking about a good body pivot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a couple of lines in here. We're gonna get the sway line on the right leg, and then we're gonna get the hanging back line coming off the lead leg. So what we're looking for is a good turn into my right hip, so you can see my leg is staying on that line. And then from there, what we're looking for is a move or a turn towards the target and a shift towards the target. So when I strike the golf ball now, you can see I'm all up against this lead leg line, the hanging back line. And then from there, we just swing through. Now the problem is, when we see pivots that are out of position or out of whack, we'll see that golfers will often swing over the top because of a poor pivot, or they'll hit the ground before the ball because of a bad pivot, and we just don't want that. So let's show you the two main faults that we see. Again, we've got my sway line and my hanging back line in. As soon as we do this in our backswing, and we work and we move through that line, we sway on the backswing. Very difficult now to get the club on plane. It'll often come down steep, as we said, and we'll, all, we'll often hit the ground before the golf ball. And then the other fault that we see is that hanging back. So when we swing down, we don't get near that line. And you can see I'm obviously gonna hit the ground before the ball here or hit it really high. And one of the reasons we're doing this is because it's very rare, very rare that we get somebody who comes for a lesson for us and we say, oh, just turn your hips a little bit less. You're turning the hips too much. Often golfers are too still, too static. They're either swaying or just not moving the hips. So this pivot motion, creating a good hip turn in the backswing is just crucial. We've got a great drill that Pierce is gonna share now. Yeah, and it's called turn, shift, and turn. So let's just go through this. So let's get rid of the golf club to start with. Maybe use a mirror for feedback or a video camera. Hands across the shoulders, you've seen this before. Go into a good golf posture. And then from there, we're gonna focus on getting a good turn into that right leg. And again, there's no swaying going on. It's a nice big turn, big hip turn. And then from there, we're gonna shift and turn. So we're gonna shift back towards the target, but we're gonna make sure there's a turning element in there as well. So you can see when I get down towards impact, I'll be into that line beautifully, and then I swing through. One more time, turn, shift, and turn. And then get the golf club in hand. So again, same sort of feeling, good turn with no say. So turn, shift, and turn. The reason Pierce is saying shift and turn is because the shift and the turn happen together. What we don't wanna do is go to the top, shift and then turn it, it tends to piece it together too much yeah this is really combining the motion we don't want this we don't want this basically that's just shifting there's no turn there so as you say piecing it all together and then after a bit of uh, a bit of practice at it i'm even going to say this andy as i hit this shot so turn shift and turn there we go, a decent shot there. Look, there's so much power in just taking the club out of your hands and working on that pivot motion. Make sure you do. Okay, Pierce, alignment six on the ground. What is the next drill <laughs> that you can do? So we're talking driver setup here. So let's just go through the alignment six first of all. So the one on the ground, which is going towards the target, is running parallel to the target line. And this one here we've got is going 90 degrees to the target line, which is an alignment, uh, it's a ball position guide when we're setting up. So. I think a lot of people, Andy, really know that they should be how they should be setting it with a driver, but often get this wrong. So this is what we're after. So we've got the ball position you can see there, just inside the lead heel. What we're after when we're setting up now, if you were to use an analysis app like the Me and My Golf one, you can draw a rectangle from the outsides of your feet straight above your head, and you can see now that this right shoulder, Andy, is lower than the left. It's, if anything, a little bit nearer this right side. This is allowing us now to hit up on the golf ball, everything that we can do because it's on a nice big tee peg. This is exactly what we're after when we're setting up to the golf ball. Maybe a slightly more weight on the right side. I'm now ready to hit this driver. The problem we see, Andy, is that when golfers are looking at this ball and it's that far forward, it feels a bit weird. So often golfers reach for it with their upper body. So you can see, what does that do? It makes my shoulders go to the left. It makes me tilt more towards this outside of the box here. And from here, it's very easy to swing the club to the left as I'm going through the shot and hitting down on it. And that's where these big slices if come from. If you're a slicer, then oh, this is the, the number one thing that you can check. And look, this sounds really simple, but the amount of golfers who know this should be in the right place 
yet they come to us and their setup is out, you make a couple of adjustments and it completely changes. So don't don't really underestimate how important yeah. this is to check. And the thing is, when you have this down like this and you actually get this, even though you know it like Andy said, and you actually get these sticks down, you go, oh, it feels a bit more than actually I'm trying myself. So it's often a case that you just need to exaggerate this feeling, but using the sticks is obviously crucial for this. So once we're here, here's a good guide for you. So obviously you know how to analyze this yourself, but a real good drill that you can do is one of our favorites called the K-bomb, where we get the right hand, put it on the right side, and just slide it down an inch. Just slide it down an inch and you can see the right shoulder now is lower than the left. And from here, I'm just gonna bring my hand to the side of the golf club and now I'm ready to hit the golf ball on the way up and hopefully that downswing won't be steep and over the top. And the shoulders are square here as well, which is another key component. Yeah, okay, give it a rip down, Pierce. Okay, let's see what we got. Nice little draw, Andy. It's That's hard exactly what to hit a slice do. from that position. It's hard to hit a slice from there. All right, Andy, I'm out. Obviously, my performance wasn't good enough. So you're in, what's the third tip? Okay, well, this is really, Having some awareness on shot shape, how many times do, do actually you get to the driving range and go, right, I'm going to work at my fades and draws. And often golfers say, I'm not quite good enough to do that. I shouldn't be practicing that. Well, look, guess what you should. It's going to help you understand where the club face is, what your path is, and you never know when the golf course is going to call for you to shape it around a tree, shape it around a dog leg, or whatever that may be. So this is really simple, and I highly recommend you do this. Place an alignment stick on the target line here right on the target line. We've got this about four or five paces in front. All we're going to be focusing on here is where the ball starts and how it curves. So we're going to get to see if we can start the golf ball left of the alignment stick and then bend it back to the right and then right of the alignment stick and bend it back to the left. Not thinking too much on how we do it. I might give you a couple of cues but not thinking too much. This is purely about how do we start the golf ball where and our body can start to figure that out really. So let me start with the fade. I'm gonna get the black flag down there. I'm coming back because I'm gonna get my pre-shot routine as well here, Pierce. Whenever we tend to go into shot shaping, I wanna make sure I'm coming back and visualizing and looking at the target line, yep. certainly when I'm doing this as well. Best thing about this is you start to learn about yourself. Well, which one am I better at? Am I better at the fade? Am I better at the draw? It's a great way of fixing a slice or a hook as well. But as, as Andy says, you need that versatility sometime on the golf course. You'll notice here my alignment's changed. I'll talk through that on the next shot. So ball started left, bending back, nice fade there. And I can see straight away as I'm swinging through where that ball's starting, which is good as well because it helps me allow my body to move through and see the initial start of that golf ball. You've got to keep your head down there, man, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Okay, next one, draw. I'm coming back. I'm going to give you a little tip on this one as well. I'm going to come back to the front. All we need to create the curve on the shot, we need a face that's either closed to the path or open to the path. Great tip here. For the draw, I'm going to shut the face down, take my normal grip, and all I'm going to do is walk in, get the golf, get the club face pointing slightly right of the stick, get the body pointing even further right, and then I'm going to swing as normal. You can do the reverse for the fade as well. That's all I'm going to do on this one. Okay, so starting it right. So, so what you're saying, the, the good thing with this, Andy, is it's really the setup that's dictating yeah. pretty much all of this, isn't it? It's not, not so much the swing, is not it? Not changing the swing, closing the face, Aim into the right and then just swing as normal. Good. Ball and starts having... right, bending back. Probably could have done with a bit more shape on that, but it's still got the draw. That's all right to me. That's how you should practice. Look, there's so many shots out on the golf course that you're going to need that are going to be right to left and left to right. All right, Andy, tip number four, what you got? Okay, random practice. What do we mean by random practice? Mm -hmm. Well, not just hitting six iron or seven iron, same shot, same target. We don't have to think, it gets monotonous, and we, sometimes we don't transfer that to the golf course. There's a place when you're working at technique, but you need to include a little bit of the real game, where you're thinking about different shots, different targets, different clubs all the time, and getting some random to that. So Pierce is gonna pick out two shots for me here. This is gonna be a great example, and it's gonna be a different target, which requires a different shot yep. and a different club. So Pierce, okay. you, you pick it out for me. Black flag on the left, so that's one, four, nine. Okay. Slightly downhill, but into the wind. So I'm going to go with an eight iron there. The beauty of this is straight away now he's in game mode. And there's an argument to say that this is all you should practice. If you only ever practice this, I'm pretty sure you'd be, you'd be pretty handy on the golf course. Can you give me a scenario where the flag is as well? Yeah, the flag is back left. Back left. Anything back left. Right? As, as that green actually looks there. Anything danger bunk, right or left? Bunk, there's bunker left and there's water short right and around Wow. <laughs> Thanks for that. 
So just hit the perfect shot, yeah? The green is five yards <laughs> in diameter. Uh, give me, a, give me a, an easy scenario, right? No, back left flag into the okay. wind. Oh, I got this. So what are you going to do? What I'm going to hit like a, a neutral lower flight controlled yeah. neutral shot. You're going you're gonna to like this one. Always a good idea with a short iron in your hands to do it that way and also when you're going into the wind. And definitely when you've got a small target. Oh, all over the flag. Come on, just watch this. Watch this, watch this. Oh. Through the back end. <laughs> that, that was beautiful. <laughs> all right, we've got a yellow flag over here, Andy. 122. 122, that's a wedge for me into the breeze. Uh, and similarly, hard this, gap wedge, Andy? <laughs> I like to smooth them in there. I like to smooth them in there. So, wind's off the left as well. So, that green, there's a bunker left. Are we just going to play left? Yeah, we're going to play it as you see it. Bunker left, let's not make it too hard. But actually, if it's a little bit short, the flag, it's going to spin back off the front. Okay. It's got a false front. Notice my, my whole approach now. I'm using my brain. I'm having practice swings. I'm thinking about what I'm doing. I'm not just hitting ball after ball. This is so important because this is exactly what we do on the golf course. And if you think of this, when you're practicing normally, you're probably thinking, I'm just hitting a full shot all the time. He's hitting two shots now, and they haven't been a full shot. Manufactured shots. Oh, oh no, it's fading back. I thought you pulled it a bit. I did pull it a little bit, but actually, pin high, just stay at the bunker. Oh, it's working I'm, its I'm way on the there. putting surface, but I'm in a different mode then as well. There's a little bit of pressure. There's a little bit of engagement to the target. Look, you've got to include some of this random practice. It will make it so much easier to get on the golf course and perform. Okay, the fifth and final tip is one of the most important. I wish golfers would do more of this. <laughs> Pierce, putting calibration. What the hell does that mean? What does that mean? Look, it's a really good way of maintaining a consistent setup, understanding consistent aim, which is obviously really important in putting, and also the strike as well. And there's lots of other things that can happen as a result of doing this. But if you're not doing this, you're definitely missing out. And when you start doing this, you might find some shocking results because you'll go, I can't surely be aiming there, but look, there's a few ways of obviously going through this calibration, but we need some feedback on the ground. So there's lots of different uh, towels or mats like this now, obviously got the Me and My Golf one in there. You can also use alignment sticks as well. So you want a putt, which is maybe under 10 feet. So we've got about a seven footer here, eight footer here. It's got a slight right to left, so keep it a relatively straight putt to start with. But by looking down here now at this, I know that my blue target line is pointing just outside the right of the hole there. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm going to use all the guides down there to help me with setup. Now straight away, when I take my setup now, I have feedback on the putter aiming at the right place. Now I know it's aiming at the right place because I've lined it all up before, but you may get over this now and go, wow, that feels like I'm aiming miles right or miles left. So that's something you have to get used to to start with. But ultimately on a putt this length especially, we need to be aimed up to where we're hitting our shot. And look, this only need, you only need to do this for five minutes before you go out or just five minutes, 10 minutes a day, whatever it is, but all this will help you do is get used to aiming the putter in the right place, striking it more solid, because if we're aiming in the wrong place, this is where we see the inconsistencies in the path and the start line. So doing this will make it so much easier, as you can see, two in a row, he's never done that before. Um, it's so much easier to start the golf ball online and roll it better. And then when you get to the golf course, you're just practicing in it, so it'll just happen more automatically. Yeah, you're definitely aware. And a good thing about here, obviously, when you have that feedback on the ground, whether it's alignment sticks or whether it's a, a towel like this, we can we have a, a reference point to the arc that we're going to be taking when we're hitting the putt. So whenever I'm putting on this towel, I'm always very mindful of what the arc the putter's taking. I almost try and match up the strike as well, so I'm getting it out the center. But as Andy said, when you've got this thing here, you can't actually miss. If we can find a way of putting it on the golf course when you're playing, it'll be a lot easier. You, you need to do that a lot more often. <laughs> Look, a lot of these things are so simple, guys, but we wouldn't be talking about these if a lot of golfers would be doing them. So putting calibration, we've got shot shaping, we've got pivot motion, driver setup, we've got random practice. They're all such an important factor for you playing better golf. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for watching. And if you want more of our coaching, check out our free video series in the description, Five Shots Lower. It definitely will help.